What's going on YouTube? It's Kyle again with DTOM Knives and Gear and today we are ready to do the review of this cool little knife. This is the Benchmade Loco Mini Loco. Stay tuned. Alright, welcome back everybody. Okay, today's the day we are going to check a look at the Benchmade Mini Loco. This is the 818 BK. Uh, they did make a full size version of this. This is the mini, but don't let that mini fool you. This thing is definitely not what I would call mini. Uh, it is not huge by any stretch of the imagination, but it is definitely not a mini knife. Uh, very, very happy about that. Uh, this knife is provided to the channel by my wonderful, wonderful friend, Dark Gravity, over on Instagram. He is a local guy to me. We are able to meet up and uh, show each other our knives. He has provided so many knives for the channel so far. I've still got the Contigo that we are going to be reviewing, uh, so stay tuned for that. He is just a super, super cool dude, and I appreciate him greatly for the support that he has given me on the channel. I will have him, again, linked down in the description. So, this is definitely a knife that I did not know that, first of all, that I was getting. He ordered this knife and sent it strictly to, straight to me. Uh, so he hadn't even gotten this knife yet. <laughs> so, uh, definitely want to get this review done. But I have really enjoyed carrying this thing. Uh, it's very different than any of the other Benchmades that I've had. Um... And I've liked it. I really have. It, at first glance, I was like, Whoa, okay, okay, that's different. I didn't even know this thing existed until he sent it to me. Um, the bad thing is, is yes, this is discontinued, this model and the uh, regular size Loco. However, I did look before um, we started this, and there are some available on some retailer sites right now. So if you do like this, Excuse me, you can definitely go and pick one up right now. If you're watching this, you know, in the future, probably not because it is technically discontinued. So, what do we have here? Well, this, like I said, just a lot different than some of the other benchmades that I've handled. Uh, but I really, really like it. Okay, obviously, the first thing you look at is the very uh curved shape of the handle. We have a very excellently done G10, 3D milled G10 that is contoured slightly, but heavily milled and just a wonderful job that they've done on these black G10 scales. This is the only color other than an exclusive or a sprint or whatever they were calling it um, that came with a, um, I think they call it a python uh, just because it looks like snake skin with 20 CV. This one is wearing S30V, focus. Do it. Come on. There we go. S30 V. Have the typical Benchmade logo on this side. While we have it up here, take a look at the access lock button, I guess is what you call it, and the pivot. Very unique, especially for Benchmade because you are used to seeing ones like this. So really, really like that. They kind of went outside the box and did something different. Really cool, still a Torx head, but it looks really good. So all the way around this thing, you do have full steel uh, liners um, that are milled out. See if we can get it, see how that is. So they're milled out for weight reduction, which is really nice. Uh, really cool barrel spacers. Look at those things. Yeah, you just don't see things like that, um, or standoffs or whatever you wanna call them. So really cool. I can't really, you know, kind of like a diamond shaped turn to the side. And then of course you have your regular looking barrel spacer here that is a uh, through hole for a lanyard. So very, very cool, very different knife. Uh, and I really have enjoyed carrying it in pocket. This one is and does come with a deep carry pocket clip. Now this is obviously a knife that people are just going to go, what the heck? Because yes, this is definitely a lanyard prioritized over the deep carry clip. So I know tons of people are going to be like, what the heck are they thinking? I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm, I don't put lanyards on all my knives, but I do have lanyards on a few, uh, and possibly probably would have preferred the deep carry clip to go up and take the place of that. And, but it doesn't bother me. I don't care if my knives seat deep carry or not. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, 
you will know that. <laughs> so it doesn't bother me, but I know it will bother some. Uh, of course, with those materials, you also get the access lock. Uh, you know, definitely, you know, the access lock is one of the most fidgety um, apparatuses, designs. Uh, in the business because this one does not have a thumb stud like most bench maids. It does have this oval shaped uh, thumb hole, which makes for a wonderful reverse flick deployment, which of course you guys know that that's the preferred way I like to open my knives. So of course that makes me happy. It also is good for just rolling it out. And then of course, just your typical using the access lock to get this thing in and out like that. Fidgety as hell, so as a typical benchmate. And of course, because it is an access lock and the uh, pocket clip is reversible, this is a wonderful choice for you lefties out there. I have a brother who's left handed, so it's very nice to see these particular designs, uh, you know, be well suited for left handed folks. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, S30V, S30V is the base still that you get from uh, Benchmade. And I'm perfectly fine with it. I like S30V. S30V is a perfectly fine steel. It is nowhere near a super steel anymore, uh, but is a perfectly good EDC steel. Uh, they did make an exclusive of this in 20 CV that was a little bit different. Um, but, you know, S30V on a Benchmade is the norm, and I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh, it does have a about three quarter of a way saber grind with a swedge, really cool blade shape. Actually, they call this a reverse tanto, and I can see that. Definitely a cool um, looking blade with the way it swoops down here whenever you put it in your hand. This one, of course, is the smaller one, but it doesn't feel like a very small knife. It's definitely not uh, huge by any imagination, but you know, I've got bigger hands and you can see that it barely fits in my big old meat hooks. Um, it, it feels a little cramped with this four finger grip right here at this area. This area, it doesn't feel like when you're doing this that it's sharp, but it kind of does poke you a little bit. If you've got huge hands like me, uh, maybe the, the larger loco would be uh, more fitting for somebody with my hand size. But I didn't find it to be that big of an issue. You know, if I'm bearing down, I can definitely feel it right there. Um, but it's not that bad, especially for just EDC task, uh, especially. Um, I can't really feel a pocket clip. You know, the loop over deep carry pocket clip does well. And I think it's because of the curvature of the handle. I thought it might be a problem, but it's really not. The only thing I can feel is that area right there, like I said. Um, does not have any jimping on the top of the spine, which I am totally okay with. I do not need the jimping. Uh, you can't choke up on this thing at all. It does have a nice sharpening shoal there, but you can't choke up. But whenever I, you know, having this and I can bear down to uh, do some really hard cutting task, it feels pretty good in the hand. It does, you know, I like the way that it curves. It basically, it's a totally different cutting experience, the way that this knife curves. And I have another knife that I was able to, um, to, ha to have and to own that is like that. And when I first got that knife, I thought it was so weird but when I got it in hand, it was awesome. And I really do enjoy this ergonomic feel of the knife kind of curving like this. It almost makes it way more comfortable to do certain cuts because of that. I know you probably wouldn't think so, but it really does. And I have enjoyed it. Uh, so let's um, find out how big this guy is. It's got quite a few size comparisons. So uh, first thing, let's go ahead. Let's put it up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It's a bigger knife than a Pair 3. Absolutely, but not too far off. We have the Spyderco Manix 2. So as you can see, pretty close to the Manix 2. Definitely, you know, uh, with if this thing was spread out, it'd be longer uh, if it was straightened out. But pretty close size comparison. A couple of, uh, let's see, we got a budget option here. This is the CRJB Felspar, pretty close as far as that is concerned. I don't know what my camera's doing. And just because I want to bring it out because I have it, the <laughs> Benchmade Anthem, uh, as you can see, definitely a slimmer knife. Uh, this one's definitely a lot thicker uh, in the profile this way uh, with those big barrel spacers. But it's not bad in pocket. I really, I really don't think it's bad at all. And then one other knife 
that before we get to the other weirdly shaped knife is the Benchmade Super Freak. And as you can see, the Super Freak is a bigger knife. Uh, the Benchmade Super Freak is a big knife, but I don't think it's too big for EDC. As you can see, though, this is definitely a little bit smaller. However, um, you know, as far as thickness, whenever you're carrying it, it's really not much of a difference. Maybe even a little thicker on this guy because of the deploying hole. And then, of course... It's about the same size, just a tad bit bigger than the pair of three. So now, as far as the shape of this bad boy, I do have one knife similar. This is the Spyderco Tough. Uh, this was the first knife that I had that I owned, kind of with a similar shape, you know, where it it doesn't. When you grab this handle, your knife's not straight out in front of you. It's kind of going off this way. See if we can get a good. See, now, when I first got this knife and, and held it, this one's got a forward finger troll, so it's a lot more comfortable in my hand. It's obviously a bigger knife. I like bigger knives. Uh, this one does not have a finger troll, but just the angle in which your hand sets when you're doing the cutting really works. Uh, I, I, I kind of... I know people are not going to buy the knife just for the hell of it to say, okay, let me just see. But if you have an opportunity to buy, uh, or I'm sorry, not buy, but go into a store and, and pick up a knife that has this cool curvature, I urge you to do it because I think a lot of people will like it. If this thing was just a little bit bigger, like I said, the original Loco, I think it would fit my hand a lot better and it would be more comfortable in my hand. But it, other than that... I'm great with it. This thing is about 7.62 inches long. It's got a 3.38 uh, inch blade and it's about 140,000 stick blade stock. Uh, 140,000 blade stock with that high saber grind. It doesn't come down to a laser beam, but it comes down to around 27 thousandths behind the edge. And I know that sounds a little thick, uh, but it's really not. This thing cuts like a dream. Matter of fact, I will go ahead and po <laughs> put the uh, unboxing of this knife uh, in the description if you want to see me cut myself because I did. It bit me. Uh, and it's, it's kind of magic the way it happens. You hardly don't even see it happen. But I got myself right here on this little hook right here. And uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of funny. So if you want to go watch that, you can. It's, it's pretty funny to see my pain. <laughs> but an absolute cutting beast. I had no issues cutting with this knife. It comes super sharp out of the box. Uh, the coating on it, I think it's PVD. It's definitely a, you know, a harder use coating. It doesn't need to be there for S30V. Uh, however, with this blacked out look, I think it looks very, very nice with their logo there. So definitely something that I don't think most people are going to mind. Now, Dark Gravity, you have to know something about Dark Gravity. He bought this knife, and I really, I know why. All right, so it has this reverse Tonto, 140,000 stick, but there is hardly any distal taper here, which means this tip is very robust. Uh, Mr. Dark Gravity does not not like a dainty tip. Uh, he had an experience when he was in the military <laughs> where he was breaking tips off of knives and uh and he does not like a dainty tip such as the tips on the uh militaries you know the pm3 and the pm2 or the pair of three and the pm2 he, he is not a fan so definitely in his wheelhouse as far as that it's got a very robust tip for uh you know just i mean you're not going to pry with a knife but you know, to really get in there, stabbing task, this thing will definitely have, and it feels like a beastly knife. Uh, it's not huge, but it, it feels so sturdy. I mean, the access lock, you guys know, as far as the access lock, I, I haven't tried to mess with this. There's a tiniest bit of side to side blade play, no up and down. Um, the, it can probably be fixed with, but just tightening that, um, the access lock, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the pivot screw just a little bit. But guys, I've lost, I know this has nothing to do with the knife. I've lost my freaking um, Leatherman Charge. Ah! <laughs> I have no idea where it's at. Of course, I have the bit kit with it. And so throughout the day, if something like that happens, all I had to do is pull that thing out and adjust it. And uh, I'm so good. But I have lost it. I have no idea where it's at. It was my favorite thing in the entire world. I carried it every single day, and now I don't know where it's at. So sad face for me. But anyways, <laughs> so anyway, you know, if I, I had that uh, in front of me right now, I could possibly just do like maybe a quarter of a turn and fix that little bit of blade play. But 
you know, most bench maids that I've had have come with good actions. Some people have not had it. Every bench maid that I've gotten has got this kind of action right here. It really reminds me of the action of the Benchmaid Super Freak, which is one of my absolute favorite bench maids. So they're doing it right there. I'm really glad to see that. I have got only one friend that I know has got a bench maid that's had a problem. Uh, and so, but all the rest of the ones that I've had have been good. I know some people, when they get it, they do have to kind of tighten up the pivot. Not a big deal to me because that's, you know, that's maintenance anyways. However, you know, you would think the thing about this knife, they're about a hundred and like 95 bucks I saw on the retailers that I, um, that I looked at. I'm not crazy about that price. I'm not sure exactly how much uh, Dark Gravity paid for this. Um, it is an excellent, excellent knife. And I really love the way they do the G10 on this thing. However, for $195, I'm just not sure it would be the knife that I chose. Now, granted, if you dig the way this thing looks, it's different. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, I've never seen anybody else with a Benchmade Loco, the, the regular or the mini. So you want something different and you want a good knife, this is definitely the way to go. Now, the only reason I say that I'm kind of hesitant about that is as far as the price is concerned, it's because I love this knife so much, the Benchmade Super Freak, 190, it's the same price, okay, like 190 to 195 dollars for these awesome uh, layer D10 uh, scales M4 steel. Now, it's a tougher steel, however, this one has G10 liners and the steel liners only go partial way. This one is full steel liners and uh, milled out. So, if robustness and sturdiness, I, you know, I really, this is a hard use knife. Don't get me wrong. Um, but you know, you have full liners on this one, partial liners on that one. I can kind of see that if that's kind of your thing that you really want that sturdiness. I've never had an issue out of this, but for my money, I think I would purchase the, uh, super freak before I would the, uh, mini loco. Now, like I said, this knife looks cool, but it also looks like a lot of other knives. This one, however, does not. Uh, so if you are a fan of the way this looks, if you like that curvature of the handle, I would definitely pick it up because it's a cutting beast. And what is a knife but yet a cutting tool? This one, of course, is in the black class, which means it is for, you know, EDC, tactical use. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, reverse grip. It's wonderful in the verse grip. <laughs> I mean, absolutely wonderful in that grip. If you ever have to use it in that, hopefully you never do. But all in all, it's a great knife. I have to admit, never seen it before. Very happy to carry it. I was really hard to keep it out of the pocket, trying to get other stuff in the pocket for review. So I really, really like it. Uh, we want to thank again, Mr. Dark Gravity for allowing us to check this thing out. He is such a wonderful guy. Again, his link will be down in the description. I've got a lot more stuff coming, guys. I've also got that 1,000 subscriber giveaway coming up. Waiting on a few things to come in, so definitely hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when that happens because it will be cool. I really appreciate all my subscribers and all the support that I've gotten for this channel. You guys are so awesome. Stay safe out there in this crazy world that we're living in, and we will see you in the next one.